And something that also continues for me is reverence for the Hall of Fame and the yep. Hall of Fame class recently inducted or soon to be inducted. And two guys, I believe, made it too. Scott Rowland and Fred McGriff. And Fred McGriff is probably a name if you're a young person watching this, you're probably like, who is that? Because Fred McGriff, it's been a long time since he has held a baseball bat and played. But he's a guy that I specifically remember for his unique batting stance and a guy who just played the game well mm. and did all the right things was one of those great teammates, a locker room guy with how, a lot of talent. How old was he in his last season? I don't remember. I think he was over the age of 50. He might have been for the <laughs> Tampa Bay Rays, I feel like. He was a he was a Tampa Bay Ray there for a while. He might have been one of the expansion picks that he they had. Okay. But I remember him as an Atlanta Brave, obviously. Yes, same. Ni 1995 team. But one of the greatest nicknames in sports, Crime Dog. It's fantastic. McGruff the Crime Dog, which, again, is probably a super dated reference now. I'm not even sure if McGruff is still uh, a thing. Some of our viewers might get the reference. They might. But the Hall of Fame, to me, is it's it's a different thing. The Baseball Hall of Fame, and maybe we put too much reverence on the Baseball Hall of Fame than other Hall of Fames, because really, and let me, let me ask you this. I heard mm -hmm. this, and I want to know if you agree, mm -hmm. that the Hall of Fame is for the fans and not for the players. Do you agree with that? Oh, my goodness. I do agree with that. Yes, I agree with that. And it was about Pete Rose being in the Hall of Fame. And the reason I bring mm, up the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. is not to talk about this class, which Scott Rowland, excellent player, Fred McGriff, excellent player, to me, both deserve to be there. Fred McGriff is one of those people who, when he was on the ballot, the people that came up on the ballot every mm -hmm. year that he was eligible, he had no chance. Right. <laughs> and that's the tough part about being on the ballot. It's when you're on the ballot. There are guys, sure. I don't know, I don't know if you're this way. I fight for guys that I feel like should get in every year. Like for the longest time, Tim Raines was my guy. For the longest time, Larry Walker was my guy. And I'm like, get these guys in. They deserve to be in. But every yeah, and time then you, you, start have, you start having the discussions about the comparables and what they've done in their career. And you really, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm with you there. Larry, Larry Walker was a no-brainer to oh. me. But it took him a while because the people that came on the ballot, like what would end up happening for me is I would look at a guy and be like, all right, he didn't make it this year. Who's coming next year? And you'd be like, damn. Like, he's not going to make it this year. Because it was like Jeter or Rivera. And you're like, well, that's that's an obvious vote. Like, the, most right. of those guys were going to get in. First time, yeah. Yeah, but the Hall of Fame, have you been to the Hall of Fame? Uh, you mean in Cooperstown? Yes. Yeah, I went when I was young, and it was special. Like, you walk in there, and it is basically a museum of Americana. I yep. remember it being that way. Cooperstown, New York, by the way, last time I was there, a long time ago. But it is not like some big place that you go to it is it was small, small town america small town, onianta new york yep. i believe yep and we went there for the fourth of july and my parents god bless my mom rest in peace she thought that going to the baseball hall of fame would be the most american thing you could possibly do on the fourth yeah. of july yeah no fireworks believe it or not wow and she was just they were shocked because nothing happened mm -hmm. but for me as a kid mm -hmm. it was what 11 and they're like we're going to go to the Baseball Hall of Fame. I was like, yes, this is fantastic. Like, I just. That is fantastic. And I want to go there again one day and I want to take my son there. But I love the Hall of Fame because I think it is for fans in the sense that when guys come up on the ballot, we all feel a certain way about the guys that are coming up on the ballot. Because you and I are at the age now where the guys coming up, we watched as a kid. And fast sure. forward 20 years from now, your kids are going to be watching guys that are on the ballot or playing right now. And they're going to be like, oh, I remember that. I remember watching that guy play. And it's this moment that you have of, wow, I saw that guy's entire career. And now five years have gone by or more. There's a lot to chew on in that museum, too. You, you get all the different uniforms. You get every team guy has like a little shrine. I think there's like one room. It looks like a dugout. And every team is displayed there with certain players from the team. It's really nice. Oh, it's, it's just, <laughs> it, it, it gives me the feels in all of those ways that you feel as a child. And it's one of the rare things in life that can bring you back yeah. to those moments. It does make you feel like a Christmas child. time, I think, does that for a lot of people, depending on your childhood, of course. But I know for me, it does bring me back in that way because you remember those moments that you had. But baseball and the Hall of Fame is very much that way. But I want to ask you some, some tough questions because oh now that guys are in, the conversation switches away from the guys that are in to the guys that are not in. And I want to specifically talk about three guys because – I want to also kind of reverse course for myself, but Pete Rose, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, these oh, are guys. Oh, gosh, here we go. Well, hold on. And now, because I was watching some videos and listening to some people talk about this, I have been very harsh in my youth about these guys because of the, the way that they or supposedly broke the rules. But I think that now 
that I have a little bit more nuance in my brain, I've rethought some of these things and I've softened it. But I don't think I've ever asked you your opinion mm -hmm. on this. Now, steroids and the gambling aspect are different. But I wanted to ask you in general about these types of guys who I think are not going to get in until they're dead, in my opinion. And how do you feel about that? Man, I have gone back. And first of all, Pete Rose <laughs> and Barry Bonds, I forget the third one you listed. Uh, Clemens. Two, Cle Clemens, yeah. Um, Pete Rose and Barry Bonds and Clemens. Uh, Pete Rose is specifically out for a very different reason than Barry Bonds. So, like, let's talk about Pete Rose first. Um, one of the greatest uh, on base percentage guys. One of the, like Mister uh, Mister Hustle played played for the uh, Reds and for the Phillies and did well and had that attitude and was really fun. But uh, gambled and got caught. And he is he is like been excommunicated from MLB. He is not in good standing with MLB. So if you no matter what. Um, how we feel, like going back to your point about the Hall of Fame being for the fans, no matter how the fans feel about Pete Rose, MLB is not good with Pete Rose. And they have made it very clear that they're not good with Pete Rose and he's kind of out. For it, Regardless of how I feel, I don't think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and I, it, that Go was, ahead. You want to say something? <laughs> I was not expecting you to say that, actually. No. And I was not. I... I because I have felt that way for a very long time. And I have found myself somewhat softening. But I also yeah, feel... I softened on it a bit too. But, okay, so there are some nuances to the Pete Rose thing that you pointed out. First of all, his standing with MLB. And I think, let's take that aside. It's more talking about should or shouldn't he. But when I think about the gambling aspect of it, a lot of people will say that, well, he gambled as a manager. And that's true for what we know. What was proven? He never gambled on his what team we know. to lose. Okay, right? Fine. Because Shoeless Joe Jackson is also not in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. having taken $500. Think about that. $500. Now, back in that day, it was yeah. a lot of money. But $500 to throw a World Series that he hit almost 400 in. And so if we're not letting Shoeless Joe in, it's very difficult to make an argument that we're going to let Pete Rose in. Because in my mind, right. the slippery slope that comes up here is what was proven versus what we all know was probably true. Was Pete Rose gambling on more baseball games while he was a player? Exactly. To me, it feels like a jump to say no, that he just started doing it when he was a manager. And I think that his behavior after the fact has not helped his cause whatsoever. He doesn't read the room. He doesn't have any humility no, whatsoever. Doesn't. Exactly. He has no humility. That's the part for me that always sets it apart. I know people want to say, well, it's what he did on the field. But when you're in this position, and, and we know this a lot today, where people get caught doing something, the first thing that they do is come out with some apology. We all know it's BS, but from a PR perspective, that's what you do. Pete Rose has never unapologetic done it. <laughs> and I think that is the problem, right? Because what, uh, he, what maybe. he, but what he did was against everything that we know. Look at the NFL is cracking down on this stuff. Well, you bring up Shula Show Jackson, and I think that's a great compare. I have to interrupt, but the that that precedence, and I'll let you, I'll let you kind of jump back on, but that precedence is a big deal because that was kind of like when uh, baseball had a really big problem with with people throwing games, and they knew. That at that time, at that age, that was a real threat to the overall uh, game. It, I mean, if everybody started cheating and throwing games, especially like a pitcher or a, or a, or especially a pitcher, it it's going to be over. And then if you have no control, so that's kind of where that began was that player. Um, so I just wanted to add that. No, I totally I thought that was a good reference. Totally agree with you, and it was a reference I had forgotten about because it's been such a long time. The Black Sox scandal. I don't know how many people bring that up in, in regular talk when they're talking around the water cooler about baseball because it's just not brought up anymore. But so Pete Rose, I think we're both in agreement on that. And I thought the other day that maybe I was going to soften to the point where I'm like, yeah, let him in. But when I thought about the other stuff that we just talked about, it's hard. It's hard for me not to let him in. Do his stats deserve to be in 100 percent? I think that he will get in posthumously one day because I think that that is what baseball is willing to do. But let's move on to the steroid guys. The steroid era to me is interesting because it's so hypocritical in the fact that we all ate up the home run chase in 98. We knew something wasn't on the up and up. 
baseball turned the other cheek. And then all of a sudden, when Barry Bonds was doing it, it was a bridge too far. And now mm. I think we've learned a little bit more about, one, how many players were participating in this. It was pretty much league-wide and rampant. And not every yeah. player, but a vast majority of players. And now we look at this, and Barry Bonds, to his credit, I guess, has never really been the guy that's been, like, Pete Rose unapologetic. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he's never really been he's, provenly tested positive. He's in good standing with the MLB. Exactly. Clemens, on the other hand, always bothered me because he was kind of an a-hole about it and throwing everybody and their mother, including his wife, by the way, under the bus during all these things. But I think of Barry Bonds, and even Clemens to an extent, but I think Clemens is a different one. But Barry Bonds, take away his steroid era stats, he's a Hall of Famer, 100%. Oh my gosh, yeah. Not even close, right? And he probably, if he never took a steroid in his life, would be talked about as one of the five best all-around players ever. Clemens, though, was precipitously dropping in his performance and then managed to go to Toronto. Remember, Dan Duquette was the GM of the Red Sox at that time, wanted to trade Roger Clemens because said he was done. And then all of a sudden, Clemens comes back with a new body and two Cy Young Awards in a row. So that. that is a little tougher. A little different. In the sense that I wonder if Clemens would have continued being as dominant later in his career had it not been for the steroid era. But Bonds was already great. He right. could have retired that day. That that's that you what you've just highlighted there is so smart because that there is the fuzzy gray line. You don't know. You will never know uh, what a player would be if they did not take steroids. And I think it comes down to. I mean, you you brought it up. Um, it comes down to. Uh, well, it, steroids were out there. Everybody was taking. It. And now I'm reading things on social media that were quotes from the '60s where people were taking some things for performance enhancement. That's always been happening. Uh, it, and was there a serious crackdown on it while people were taking it? No. Uh, that's why, well, I mean, the first time you're really hearing about it is Barry Bonds, like you mentioned, uh, Alex Rodriguez, and Roger Clemens was the first time. And now what you'll, what you'll see is that um, if you accept how widespread it was and that everybody was taking it and playing this on the same, the same field, Maybe you could soften on your approach where you can just say, hey, it was a more fun game. There were more home runs. Uh, I don't agree with this, by the way, but you could see, I could see, you know, this is one way they could get in. And I don't think I, I've gone back on should they or shouldn't they be in the Hall of Fame. I, right now, today, you ask me, I don't think they should be in personally. And a lot of the a lot of um, old baseball sports writers who vote on the Hall of Fame agree. They don't I don't think they're going to want the, these guys in either. Um, but if you, but one way they could get in is if you accept how rampant this steroid use was, and it wasn't just the superstars. There was, I think, David Bill, David Bell, current manager of the Cincinnati Reds, on the Phillies at the time was taking steroids, and he never looked that big. Brady was, Anderson. Brady Anderson. So uh, Grady, did you say Grady Anderson? Brady Anderson. Brady Anderson. So. The other, the other thing that could allow them to get in is all of these players, I don't think there's one of them that are in bad standing with the MLB where they said, yeah, we're, we're breaking the rules and we're not participating with you. I mean, Alex Rodriguez is, is one of the most famous ones, I think, that uh, was, was standing in front of the judge, um, took, took the urine sample, took, took the, and, and I think at some point he told the truth, but all th throughout all of that, he participated with MLB and was, he was okay with them. And now he's retired and now he's an announcer and he's doing really well. And he, MLB and him, they have no problem. So if you, so if you look at A-Rod or Clemens or Bonds and you agree that everybody was taking it and it was good for the game and now they've cleaned it up and, and, and they're not in bad standing with MLB, sure, maybe they get into the Hall of Fame. Personally, as a fan, today, you ask me, I don't think they should be in. Yeah, I think that for me, I would go person by person. Like I said, McGuire, I wouldn't put in because his game changed so drastically in the steroid era. Remember, there were some seasons where he had more home runs than singles, and that's ridiculous. Like, he was not that guy before steroids. We, we both know that. But Barry Bonds, yeah. again, and the thing about Bonds, too, Bonds still had a lot of those five tools even after that. I mean... His on-base percentage in some of those years for being walked, he was still stealing 20 bases. Yeah. Like, in, 
that's not steroids. He's that was him, right? Like in his eye, his hand eye coordination was insane. Still have to hit the ball. Insane. <clears throat> so I wanted to bring that up because I was curious what your thoughts were on that. And you're more hard or iron fisted than I thought that you would be on that. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I am. I, well, okay. Who got inducted this year? Scott Rowland. Mm -hmm. Clean player. Played in the late nineties. Never was proven to take in steroids. Great defensive player. Hit 316 home runs. Had a good average. I think he got in mo a lot because of his defense. Uh, quiet player. Apparently very dry sense of humor. Uh, gold Glover. Got into the Hall of Fame. And now his numbers do not reflect that of, um, you know, 500, 600, 700 plus home runs. He got in the Hall of Fame. It really sets the stage and it sets the precedence for players like Nolan Arenado. Uh, very good defensive player with that that's shown that they can have um, enough of an offensive uh, capability to maybe make the Hall of Fame one year. So I like that, you know, going back to this year's Hall of Fame, I really like that Scott Rowland got in. I think it's kind of showing maybe, uh, maybe the voters for the Hall of Fame are picking players like that rather than the guys who hit 700 home runs.